out. We're waiting on Rachel, but um, she That's said fine. she's logging in now. Fantastic. Okay, so I'll start. So you are all very, very welcome. Uh, we have done two webinars on Northern Ireland in the past, but we covered it in uh, its entity in the entirety. And this time we decided to do a deep dive. And a lot of people, you know, we always encourage them when they're coming to Ireland to visit Northern Ireland, but people tend to think of Belfast and Titanic and the Giants Causeway. So what we wanted to do is highlight what you can see when you go to the west of Northern Ireland. So you've three amazing counties. We're going to start off with Derry. And Derry is a city that's old and new. It's medieval, it's a walled city, but it also has a very modern, vibrant, sort of trendy feel about it as well. And we're going to hear about that from Aoife, sorry, from Karen up in uh, Derry. And then we are going to, and the other thing to remember about Derry is its proximity to Donegal. So we always make sure that anyone that goes to Donegal goes to Derry. And like Likewise, it goes to Derry, goes to Donegal. And then we're going to go to County Tyrone and we're going to go to the Dark Sky Observatory there. And um, sorry, we're going to go to Fermanagh and then County Tyrone. So Fermanagh is it's an area where Rebecca in our own office is from. It's, a, it's full of, you know, flora and fauna. And um, like I'm always mesmerized by when I'm driving there, you're driving along the roads and a, a flock of starlings will fly from one side of the road to the other. And then at the next field, you see a flock of swans. It's beautiful beautiful, um, a fantastic lakeways and riverways, etc. And you're going to hear from some uh, house owners there, country house owners, as well as from uh, Tanya. And then we're going to go to the Dark Sky Observatory and we're going to uh, hear from Michelle there in County Tyrone. And again, it's something very unusual that you probably don't know about. And a lot of our, our um, clients may have gone uh, to visit Barons Court uh, when they're in County Tyrone as well. So it's great to bring it to the the um, the, the very, you know, um, beautiful and uh, full of, you know, water activities, etc. And then as well as that, we're going to see the water taxi in Fermanagh that everyone is very proud about. So um, we're going to start off with Derry. And um, so we will go over to Karen in Derry. Sorry, Karen. Hey, Karen, you're yeah. muted. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Perfectly. Very good. Siobhan, thank you so much for this opportunity for speaking to over 500 of your clients today from all over um, America and Canada and beyond. Delighted to have the opportunity here to speak with you. So a very keen meal of Volsha um, from the wall city of Derry, um, otherwise known as London Derry, uh, which is Ireland's only completely wall city and renowned as one of the finest uh, wall cities in the British Isles and indeed Europe. Um, the walls, in fact, were built in 1613 by the Guilds of London. And this is a city that we believe that is so rich in history, culture and tradition. Um, in fact, it was listed as the world's 1001 historical sites that you must see before you die by UNESCO. So we have thousands of our many thousands of visitors who come and walk the walls year on year. Um, I suppose uh, what you would refer to Derry as what I would refer to Derry would be the Edinburgh of Scotland, or more recently, we've been referred to by one of the US agents last year as the Clarny of Northern Ireland. Um, so this is definitely a must-see destination within the island of Ireland and indeed Northern Ireland. So within this one mile radius, you can discover the city's history by taking one of our daily guided tours. There are numerous tours that are available for all of your clients, or alternatively, you can take a taxi tour or even the site city, site, uh, the city sightseeing tour, which will give you a fabulous panoramic view of this wall city. Alternatively, you can pay a visit to the Guild Hall, which is the seat of our local government, or meet an apprentice boy at the Sage Museum or learn about the civil rights movement at the Museum of Free Dairy. So it's a mixture of past, but also the living history and moving to the future. Now, as part of Tourism Northern Ireland's new Embrace the Giant Spirit experience, which many of you may have heard about, we have had, we have a wonderful new immersive tour, um, namely Unlocking the Wall City. Um, and this is ideal for small groups and FITs 
um, it's a fully guided tour with your guide for the day, taking you to seven attractions. But it also includes having the most amazing homemade scones in a thatched cottage located in the craft village. And the tour concludes with beer sampling and tasting at the Wall City Brewery, which is the only brewery restaurant um, in Northern Ireland today. And in fact, it was voted by Georgina Campbell as the most atmospheric restaurant in 2018. So a lot of the tour operators are now using this as a key lunch or dinner stop. But another new tourism product that an offer that might be of interest for the FITs is our new visitor pass. This is the first of its kind in Northern Ireland. There's not one in Belfast as of yet, only in Derry. But your clients can sample up to nine attractions uh, if they purchase a one or day or one or two day pass. And hopefully that will be available um, from Adams and Butler. I suppose one of our unique selling points as Siobhan has alluded to is at our location. We are located superbly as we're only one hour's drive from the Jans Causeway and one hour's drive from the Wild Atlantic Way. So I recommend that your clients overnight in Derry, use it as the hub to explore the Jans Causeway and Wild Atlantic Way, and also even visit the Seamus Heaney home place or the dark skies, which Mary will highlight later in her presentation. We indeed in Derry have over 10 four star hotels within a five mile radius and some lovely historical boutique hotels, which are ideal for your chauffeur driven clients. As the song goes, eat, drink and be merry in Derry, you can enjoy the finest locally sourced produce of food and drink in, me in many of our fine eateries. Or you might even want some of your clients to sample our very own Made in Dairy Food Tours, which is a four hour food tour sampling the finest food and drink in the city. I believe that one of our unique selling points in the Wall City is that we are an all round destination that you can send your clients to in January, July, December, they will all have a unique experience. And the one thing that we can guarantee your clients is traditional music nightly. We have a pub called Peter O'Donnell's and it has traditional music every night of the week. So it's a fantastic uh, city destination. Now to Halloween, um, did you or any of your clients know that Derry was voted by US Today as the best Halloween destination in the world? Well, it is in 2019, we had over 140,000 visitors to the city over five day period. In fact, in 2017, the New York Times ranked our festival as in the top six spooky destinations alongside New Orleans, Orlando, Transylvania and Salem. For those Canadian agents who are attending today, in 2017, we had the Canadian Weather Network do a live broadcast from the city of Derry on Halloween night on the 31st of August. So again, this has got such great international profile. So if your clients who love the spirit of Halloween, there is no better place to visit. And we can assure your clients a very warm and legendary uh, welcome. So to sum up, why send your clients to Derry? Uh, where the Ireland's only completely walled city, the perfect place for exploring the Wild Atlantic Way and Causeway Coastal Route, excellent value for money, Halloween is the best destination in the world and in fact just to let you know that 20% of our bed nights are from the North American market so we have something to suit your clients. I think I suppose due to Covid I believe that many of your clients may want to avoid the larger crowded cities but may prefer smaller cities with wide open spaces and close to nature and certainly dairy has an abundance. In conclusion, our greatest asset is our people. We're warm, witty and welcoming, and we guarantee a very warm welcome to dairy. And we look forward to welcome your clients to Northern Ireland and to the Wall City when the time is right for them to travel. So if you need further information, um, I hope that you will get my details or book through Adams and Butler. And for further information, the website is www.visitdairy.com. So thank you so much for coming on tonight and I hope that was of interest to you. Brilliant, so we're going to see a short video now, Gio, aren't we? Brilliant.
Sorry, just a uh, technical difficulty there. Well done. Let me try again. Just, just while we're waiting, Karen, what was the name of the pub you mentioned? Uh, Peter O'Donnell's. Peter. So P E A D P A E D A R. Peter well, O'Donnell. Right in the chat box for people. There's a lot yes, of questions I'll, coming yes, in. Yes, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, great. It's a great place to visit. It's packed every night, <laughs> regardless of what time of year you go to it. So, and again, we're encouraging a lot more of the pubs to do that as well. You wouldn't always get that at many towns and villages in Northern Ireland. So it is a great vibrant city. And um, again, I mean, the stats say it all that, I mean, the other thing is Derry was actually one of the main ports of emigration. Um, so again, a lot of people come back to trace their ancestors. Um, there was two main ports of emigration in Ulster was Derry and the other one was in Cove and County Cork as well. So again, there's a great affinity with the North American market. And can you, do you have that video there? Brilliant. So I hope you enjoy the video. Brilliant. So, Gio, are we visiting for Mana now? Uh, we're going to um, the Brooks, uh, Christopher and Alan Brook. So, uh, Chris and Alan, would you prefer me to show the video first or? Oh. Well, uh, just uh, just like say a huge welcome to everybody. Um, it's afternoon here. Uh, to some of you, it's late at night, early in the morning. So. <laughs> We're just going to spotlight Chris there. There he is. So, so great you could all join us. Um, I, we would really like about two hours to show you Colebrook and all the wonderful things about it. Uh, but we've done it in about 10 minutes. And um, I'm going to hand over now to Siobhan and her technical team who will put on a short video. video and then please feel free to ask any questions afterwards. So um, this is almost a world exclusive because uh, we haven't seen into Colebrook before on one of our webinars or indeed on any of the webinars. Um, so you're getting an opportunity here to see Colebrook and Ashbrook. So two fantastic properties. And, uh, you know, a lot of you often ask us about shooting parties as well. So that's something you can talk to Chris about at the end of the video. So I am just going to um, share this um, Okay. Jill, you can make sure that this is running okay when it runs. Yep. We are now approaching Colebrook Park. The ancestral home of the Brook family, the Fighting Brooks of Ulster one of the most important historical families since 1800 in Great Britain and Ireland, contributing one field marshal, one admiral, and eight generals since Waterloo. Churchill's head military strategist from 1941 to 1945 in World War II, and a Prime Minister of Northern Ireland for 20 years. This is a truly fascinating hidden gem. Good morning, and welcome to Cobra Park. Um, I'm delighted to be able to show you all um, what Colebrook is like and why we think it's so special. And it is one of the most important large houses in Northern Ireland with a very strong political history and perhaps the strongest military history of any of the families in Northern Ireland. And this is the library. And um, when the, this was part of the house that was built in 1824, And you will see the wallpaper, which is in fact 1834, once the walls had dried out. So it's now 100 and where are we, 80 years old. And it's got family portraits. And in particular, it's got my grandfather, who was Prime Minister of Northern Ireland for 20 years. And one of my uncles, two uncles were killed. My father survived having been wounded in the Second World War. And in fact, in the two world wars, there were 23 Brooks from here who fought and 18 
were killed. And that is just part of our family military history. And here is a, here is a photograph of the, of the uh, most important uh, military uh, member of the Brooke family, who, is, who was Field Marshal Lord Allenbrook. And he was chief of all British forces, chief of the Imperial General Staff, from 1941 until the end of the war. And to, to put him in context of America and whatever, there is a wonderful book which is called Masters and Commanders, which is about Roosevelt and Marshall, Churchill and Allenbrook. And they were the four strategists, and, or two strategists, and two political leaders who won the Second World War. And that picture is in fact of Allenbrook and Churchill and Montgomery on the day that they crossed the Rhine, having tea on the, on the shore of the river. And uh, that is very important indeed. We're now in the drawing room. Oh, it's a bigger room than the library. And again, the wallpaper is 1834. And dare I say it, even more family, family portraits, including the young Henry Brooke, who moved here from Donegal, because the family were in Donegal until 1641. And that is his portrait there. And he was knighted on the battlefield. And over on this side, we have General Sir George Anson, which is the Anson and Litchfield family who are cousins of the Queen. The reason he's there is because his daughter, Henrietta Anson, was my great-great-great-grandmother. As a result, her son, Sir Victor Brooke, was Queen Victoria's godson as well. And as we come up here, we've got the, what we call it the Waterloo Cup, but it was kind of Francis Brooke who fought in the Peninsula Wars. He then went to the American War, where he fought under his brother, uh, General Sir Arthur Brooke, who was involved in the burning of the White House in 1814. I'm, a, I'm not sure whether I'm ashamed to say, but it was undoubtedly a pity. And he then came to Waterloo, and in Waterloo, he survived Waterloo, and his nephew, another Francis Brooke, was killed at La Haye Saint. And as we move around, we see various other things. And here are a couple of pictures which are uh, from my job for the Queen as being Lord in Waiting. And that is um, Vladimir Putin, the uh, Russian president, because I looked after him when he came on his state visit. I've been doing those for 20 years and he was one of the heads of state and I accompanied him for four days during his state visit in his car in his Aleutian uh, flying to Edinburgh and on a Russian warship in the Thames. So it was quite a trip and that is the uh, Emperor and Empress of Japan who came here about 18 years ago I think to London and I do that in London and they were particularly charming and wonderful people. So it's a great privilege to do what I do. And also during my time of looking after heads of state, I have uh, had the privilege of looking after President Obama on his state visit uh, five, five or six years ago, and President Trump uh, two years ago. And uh, they were both um, great privileges for me. And I spent some time with them during their visits. And just on the way out, another American connection, a piece of wood supposedly chopped by Abraham Lincoln, who used to do that in his pastime, so we're told, presented by Adelaide Stevenson to my grandfather when he visited America whilst he was Prime Minister of Northern Ireland. Thank you very much for watching this, and we very much look forward to, to looking after you when you come to Northern Ireland especially with all the American connections. And we have 12 bedrooms with their own bathrooms, double and twin bedrooms. And um, we look forward to seeing you in the future. We are now leaving Colebrook Park to join Lord Brookborough's brother, Christopher, at Ashbrook House. Welcome to Ashbrook House. Come on in and let me tell you something about this fantastic house. Well, Ashbrook House is a dar house to Colebrook House, which you've just been in. Uh, it was the home of the second Viscount Brookborough, that's my father. And more recently, we have um, turned it in to welcome visitors as both a self-catering and a catered 
five-star residence. So if you uh, want to cater and you want staff and the chefs and the, the butlers and the chauffeurs, uh, that could be arranged for you. Or alternatively, you can come here with your family and take, uh, and take Ashbrook House. We're really ideally located within the province, where we're an hour and a half from Belfast and two hours from Dublin, right, as they say, in the heartland of the Fermanagh Lakelands. Um, within easy reach of, if you're golfers, Royal County Down, Royal Port Rush, um, and of course, Galgorm Castle, which hosted the 2020 Irish Open, which is run by uh, John Catlin uh, from the States. Um, we're also right next door to the Lockan Resort and Spa. Now, the house has eight bedrooms, um, five of which are en suite. It's got a total of seven bathrooms. Uh, it has two large uh, sitting rooms, a dining room which can seat 20. Uh, and as I say, it is totally yours for the period that you're here. Ashbrook House, I said, is within Colebrook Park. And Colebrook Park in 2013 um, was ranked as the top location for the most species found by 24 scientists over a period of 24 hours, which is called the BioBlitz. And they discovered uh, 1,360 species over a 24 hour period. So very much the estate is a sanctuary for wildlife. We have uh, the seeker deer here, uh, we have otters on the river, we have badgers, we have plenty of places that you go for absolutely stunning walks. And the Colbrook River meanders through the estate. We are, however, only 12 miles from the historic town of Inniskillen, which is the only town in the United Kingdom which is actually on an island on Loch Erne. Um, it's incredibly beautiful. There are some wonderful stately homes around about, such as Florence Court, Castle Cool, uh, which are open, which can be visited. And there are many things that one can do on the loch itself, whether it's sailing or water sports, or going out to visit some of the early Christian sites like Devonish Island, which is also here. Devonish Island is, is absolutely unique. In, it has the most wonderful tower and it was, uh, dates back to about the 5th century. Um, we also have, very close to Inniskill, the Marble Arch Caves, which are, the, I think, the longest navigable cave network um, in, uh, in Europe. You can go down to the caves, they have wonderful stalactites and stalagmites, and it's a world, uh, it's going to become, we hope, a World Heritage Site, but it's a, it's a very famous geopark. Additionally, we have terrific fishing on the Colbert River, which meanders through the estate, uh, and also two miles of salmon fishing on the River Morn, which runs out at Londonderry. And as every fisherman knows, the salmon are either on or they're not on, but it is ranked as being one of the best fisheries in the United Kingdom. Um, additionally, we do clay pigeon training for people who want to learn to shoot or for those who want a simulated clay pigeon day we can organize that for them as well. That involves eight different drives moving um, peg up to every drive and as many as six to seven thousand clay pigeons at various heights uh, and various speeds coming over your head which is quite a challenge. Um, we can organize uh, pheasant shooting, partridge shooting, uh, deer stalking um, and some limited snipe shooting as well and woodcock shooting. So all that can be organised in advance when we know when you're coming. But the secret really of the whole of Colebrook Estate is it's very private. If you take Ashbrook or Colebrook House, they're yours. They're yours for the time you're here. And you will get a real taste of the Irish experience. Ashbrook has eight large double beds. Rooms, uh, five of which are on suite and two separate bathrooms. Um, and Colebrook has 12 en suite. Uh, it has a total of 15, but 12 are en suite. And this is a typical example of one of the bedrooms. They're all very spacious, all very comfortable, and with their own shower and bath in the bathrooms. So if you're coming with your family or with a whole group of your friends, there is plenty to do and there's plenty to see. And it's our job and our privilege to make this your home while you're here and give you the best possible time and the best possible Irish experience that you can get while you're on the island of Ireland.
so over to you, Gio. Just stop, stop, stop. So um, what's interesting as well is Alan is also a Knight of the Garter. So for any of you who are interested, um, Alan, if you're still there, or uh, Chris, the other Knight of the Garters will be Prince William, Prince Charles. I know uh, King Felipe of Spain. Do we have Alan or Chris? Sorry, I just admitted Chris back in, so I'm not okay. sure he's having issues there. I'll okay, try. don't worry, don't worry. So maybe he can talk about that later and we should go over to Tanya then. But uh, bear in mind, you, you've met Alan and Chris and you're going to meet John, John, who's also in Fermanagh. And should any, you know, advisors want to arrange cocktail parties and, you know, we present their clients to encourage them to book a trip, we'd be more than willing to do that as well. So will we go on to Fermanagh? Um, Gio, on to Tanya. Yes, Tanya. Uh, Thank Hi, you. Tanya. Hi, uh, hello, everyone. I think you're going to maybe see a very short video first. Uh, it's only about 30 seconds, just to give you a little taster of the Lakelands. But uh, we've had a lovely introduction to Pramana already. Great. And I've got the video ready here. Let's go. Um, it's great that uh, there's so many of you have decided to tune in and listen and we're delighted to come to you live from the Fermanagh Lakelands which have been given a great introduction by Alan and um, Christopher there. Um, I say I work for Fermanagh Lakeland Tourism and we're the destination marketing organisation for the region and I have the most brilliant job in the world because I have spent a lifetime promoting this beautiful Lakeland County of Fermanagh. We are Ireland's Lake District and we are situated in the southwest of Northern Ireland, about two hours northwest of Dublin and an hour and a half southwest of Belfast. And we are also only a half hour drive from the Atlantic coast and the wild Atlantic way that Karen referred to. So we're really only a short little detour uh, into the Fermanagh Lakelands from the Wild Atlantic Way. Now the uh, area is dominated by a 50 kilometre stretch of waterway, uh, which called Loch Ern, and that makes up the entire, goes the entire county through, uh, through Fermanagh. Because I see some questions there that people maybe aren't quite sure where we are. Fermanagh Lakelands encompasses the county of Fermanagh, one of the 32 counties in Ireland, and it's Ireland's Lake District. We're situated just south of Derry, who you, what you've heard about earlier on, and we're just east of Donegal, and to say we're about um, two hours northwest of um, Dublin. So a beautiful lakeland region, Loch Erne, upper and lower Loch Erne, traverse the entire length of the county, about 80 kilometers. So a lot of our attractions, activities, our accommodation base uh, is all situated around the lake. Very uncommercialized part of Ireland. We don't have mass tourism, but we have lots to, um, to entertain our, our visitors. Now people come to us for a lot of peace and quiet. We're a lovely rural area, lovely places to walk, lovely lakeside walks. 
a really nice place to get away from it all in, in Ireland. And as I say, we talk about it later on when we talk about the water taxi, but one of the best ways to explore um, Fermanagh is to get out on the waterway. And I'm sure as you know, a lot of holiday memories are very much dependent on the interaction that we have with local people and also with the people that we meet. And we've met a couple already and we meet a few more as the presentation goes on. But where you come and stay in Fermanagh and the places you visit, it's all the interaction with those local people and the places that they'll recommend that you go and, and visit. Um, and as I say, it's, it's really good to, you know, when you come to the area to talk to the local people and get them to share their ideas and recommendations of, of things that you can go and see. So what have we got to offer? As well as a beautiful lakeland landscape, you can get out on the waterway on water buses and water taxis, and we'll talk about that later. And um, food is very important over here in Ireland. And we have even got a, a, a new taste experience. And um, so if you enjoy your food and your drink, you can now go on a three hour or whatever length of time you want walking tour of Enniskillen town where you can pop into a number of pubs and restaurants and cafes and enjoy locally made food and drink. Lovely experience. We even have our own distillery now. So if you're fond of a little tipple, especially gin and vodka, you can visit the Boatyard Distillery and you can even access that by water. So that's a lovely experience to have as well. I think it was Alan or Christopher mentioned the island town of Enniskillen, the only island town in the whole of uh, Ireland, completely surrounded by water, beautiful, beautiful town. Uh, it has its own castle. It has a craft and design center. It has a theater. It has a stately home called Castle Pool, just on the edge of town. Beautiful town, right in the middle of Enniskillen. Uh, again, completely surrounded by water, but a great way place uh, where you can pick up some of the water buses uh, to visit uh, the rest of the of the county. As I said before, we've fabulous scenery. Um, some of you may have seen the Stairway to Heaven. The Stairway to Heaven is a 14 kilometer walk, which includes a boardwalk up Kalka Mountain in Fermanagh. It has become an internet sensation. So if you're not aware of it, go on to uh, Facebook and find out all about it. But if you do come and you have three or four hours to spend, it's a beautiful way to enjoy the scenery of Fermanagh. Um, we're also the home of Balik Pottery, and I'm sure a lot of your clients will be familiar with Balik, the oldest pottery in Ireland. And uh, the, China there is exported all over the world. They do some fabulous tours uh, to Belik pottery and you, your clients can even enjoy um, painting some of the pottery uh, and they can arrange for that to be sent uh, back to them afterwards. So the fabulous tours there. Karen also mentioned the immigration. The Ulster American Folk Park is literally a half hour's drive from the Fermanagh Lakelands and beautiful outdoor museum that traces the whole history um, of um, um, of um, Ireland and when the Irish people moved over to the Americas and how they lived in Ireland and how they lived in America, the Living Outdoor Museum, fabulous experience. Uh, we also have loads of castles, stately homes that you can visit. We really have something for, for everyone. We're, as I said before, very much an undiscovered part of Ireland, rich in history and, and, and her heritage. And as I say, not a mass tourism destination, but we have a really authentic welcome with beautiful accommodation. And you'll hear about more lovely accommodation that we have too. with beautiful, uh, a golf resort as well, which is very popular. And again, because we're only half an hour from the Atlantic, we have access to um, um, other courses uh, as well, which, uh, which I'm sure your clients will enjoy, links courses as well as Parkland courses. So as I say, um, you're very welcome to the Fermanagh Lakelands um, and um, I'm sure you will enjoy the rest of the, uh, of the presentations about our region. And um, if you want to know anything more about the area, 
uh, our website is fermanalakelands.com and I'm sure we'll be supplying our own email details as well if anybody wants to um, hear anything more about the area and we're quite happy to send you itineraries of the region which you might find helpful as well. We've done up a number of themed itineraries which hopefully you'll find useful uh, as well. So thanks to yeah. me. Thanks for that, Tanya. I'm going to show a map before we go on to a quick, a short little video about the waterways. So I'm going to share this. Um, whoops. Okay. So, um, oh, I had one there and I just went. Okay. Well, um, oh, I had one there with the counties on it. So like, maybe I show this one. I can't make that bigger. Oh, that's annoying now. Yeah, I, we can supply, I can supply a, a, um... No, no, but we, we need, this is the one I was trying to show okay. there. So yeah, so uh, there, if you can see um, Derry, London Derry there in the top, you can see Fermanagh down in, um, Giovanna, can you see that on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you can see Fermanagh down here in the um, northwest, well, the southwest, and um, you can see Tyrone. So we were, we're uh, be going to the observatory later. You can see Fermanagh. And like when you, when you go to uh, Crum Castle, for example, it's right on the border here. And it's about 90 minutes, you know, two hours from um, uh, Dublin. Um, and then you can, for just to give you an idea, you've got Belfast over here on um, the right hand side there as well. And then the city of Derry up here again. You can just notice up here and uh, Donegal then would be there as well. I hope that gives people, um, you know, an idea. Um, and the reason we're doing the webinar was to showcase the Western side of Northern Ireland. And the next time we'll be doing one on uh, the Eastern side. So uh, will we show you the, I'll stop sharing now. We'll show the video of the waterways. And again, that fantastic island. So it's just a short video. There's no sound, but just to get a bit of the yeah, scenery. I can, I can talk over this one. Um, I think you, you suggested. What you're seeing now is a video of the new water taxi service that's available in Fermanagh. And the guy that runs this is a local guy called Barry. And he basically spent most of his uh, childhood sailing and kayaking and fishing along the waterway. And he basically decided that he was really inspired to showcase his own homeland and he wanted to give visitors an opportunity to really become immersed in the lakelands and in the spectacular landscape that we have in Fermanagh. So basically he, he provides a very bespoke experience on this water taxi. We, all, we say locally that it looks like a New York cab from the outside but once you actually step inside, it's got lovely leather, uh, white leather seating, like a, a, um, your own private jet. So the water taxi itself will take up to about eight people. And he will basically design a bespoke tour for your clients to get them out uh, on the waterway. He can pick you up at any sort of venue. So anybody that has a lakeside venue, for example, uh, Lord Iron, he could pick somebody up from um, the jetty um, at um, Crom and bring people on a personalized tour um, of the entire um, um, island. So it's a really fabulous, um, fabulous experience that he, that, he, um, that he offers. There's no set itinerary. Um, you basically you know, mm -hmm. tell him how much time have you got to spare? What would you like to see? Um, he bring you out to some of the uninhabited islands. Um, there's even an island that has um, pigs grazing on it. And the local butcher uh, raises the pigs on this island. Uh, um, and the pigs make very famous Irish black bacon. Uh, and then visitors and locals can go into the local butchery uh, and, and and purchase it. So uh, lots of historical islands. We've had 12th century uh, island, Devonish as well, yeah. which is a beautiful island as well. So he'll basically um, bring you on a personalised tour and it's a very 
very special. Fantastic. So we'd better go on to Crumb Castle because we're under, um, uh, we also have to go to Oma. Okay. Um, County Tyrone. So John, John, are you there? So now we're going over to Crumb Castle and Lord Earn in Crumb Castle. Well, the Earl. So, um, yes, you're not muted. That's great. So it's happy to you. Thank you so much. And as I said, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And a huge, huge welcome to Crumb Castle um, in County Fermanagh. My dear neighbours, the Brooks, have explained, and Tanya, a lot of what you can do in Fermanagh. What I would like to do today is to explain what happens here at Crum Castle. Um, my name is John Crichton. I am the seventh Earl of Earn, and with my lovely wife, Harriet, the Countess of Earn, if you've got a slide coming up, Giovanna, that'd be lovely. Um, we live here. This is our home. We are not a hotel. We're not a guest house. And so we thrive on hospitality, good food, plenty to drink, and the experience of being looked after in many ways. We can rent out the house, sleeping up to 30 people, where you become the Earl and Countess for the time you're here, or we host together a smaller group, giving you the wonderful hospitality and warmth that you deserve into our home with our dogs and our friends, and for you to absolutely enjoy. Before I show you around with some slides, we're gonna show you a sneak video that was done pre-COVID, um, and it shows what we do um, while preparing uh, for the likes of you lovely lot to come and enjoy the hospitality here at Crumb Castle. Francis, how are you? Very well. Any sh London shopping or luggage? There's just one small bag, Francis, for Timothy. <laughs> no shopping on this trip, sadly. No. Truffle, darling. Hello, hello. Oh, Francis, has she been behaving? Yes, doing very well. It's <laughs> good, makes the change. Settle down. Good, good. And Francis, Beautiful day. Um, I know Lord Earn was going out on his boat. Is he back? Oh, yes, he's just back in five minutes. He's having a little cup of tea, I think, in the library. Wonderful. Well, I'll go and catch up with him there, I think. Oh, gosh. It's, um, you know, that journey's so good these days. Oh, yes. Perhaps I see the bars open the vodka. Maybe he's getting a little bit of a rattle there. I hope he's not in the martinis already, <laughs> darling. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm very good indeed, thank you. Very good. Good, good. Well, we've got quite a night ahead of us. Yes, we have. I'm so glad you're back because we've got quite a bit of a, a dinner for tonight. Great, good. Um, so um, I think Joan would love to see you. I think she's in the drawing room somewhere. Great, perfect. Well, let's go and catch up with her because I know we don't have much time. Lovely. Um, tell me, darling, um, how, was, how was your day out? Did you catch many fishies? Um, I didn't, but it was lovely and calm. Great. Joan, are you there? Hello. Maybe I was back. Drawing room's looking, looking nice. Good. Where's that, Joan? Joan! Hello. How are you? Very well. Good to have you back. And good. Good. Uh, because I want to talk about to tonight's menu, if you. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Yes. Good. No, I'm dying to know what Keith's going to whip up for us in the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> Thirty for dinner, Lady Erin. Thirty. Gosh. Yes. Um. For starters, he they are having Strangford lobster and prawn salad, followed by beef Wellington, and for dessert, vanilla panna cotta with autumn fruits. My goodness. I'm hungry already. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. That's fantastic. 
Great, good. So I've been busy in the kitchen all morning. I just would like you to check the table um, and to know what dinner service you'd like to use for tonight. Well, I think, Jane, I think as many sounds so delicious, should we use the Crichton service? Perfect. Yes, we will. Perfect. Great, good stuff. I think Lord Aaron, you and I should hit the cellar to see what wine we'll have to choose for tonight. Wonderful. My favourite part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Jane. Should we head to the dining room? Yes, we will. Well, there you have it. That's exactly what goes on behind the scenes. And we thrive on looking after you. Um, as I said, we can hire the castle out uh, up to 30 people without us. We go elsewhere, but we might be around to pop up and keep you company for dinner one night and show you around, or you're completely private, or we would love to host together, my wife and I, a small group where we take you out. And you've already seen the delights of what goes on here at Fermanagh. So now what I thought I'd love to do is take you around the house um, and show you exactly what you're in for. So we'll start with the, the next slide, please. Thanks, Giovanna. So, um, there is the second slide, which is uh, the exterior of the castle. Uh, that's uh, taken as you come up the drive. Uh, beautiful fairy tale. In fact, we're probably one of the only castles actually in Northern Ireland. Um, and actually at the end of the day, one of the few people that host full on all the time. Uh, luckily, we're still young enough to do that. And the next slide, please. Thanks, Giovanna. Uh, I think we're going towards, uh, this is one of my favorite, favorite um, shots of the estate. It shows our castle up on the hill and our beautiful Victorian uh, boat house again on Loch Erne, which we will take you out on and uh, show you around in our private boat. Um, or you can also hire good old Barry Flanagan's water taxi to come and literally pick you up on your doorstep from there. We have many excursions we can also take you on as well um, throughout the manor indeed. And the next one, thank you Giovanna when you're ready. Um, our beautiful Grand Hall, they say that's uh, one of the finest staircases in Ireland with our crest and our coat of arms at the top, uh, God send grace and our beautiful tapestries. The house was designed by Edward Bloor, built in 1840, completed in about 1843 um, after a small fire that delayed uh, completion. But Bloor was fantastic and also did a lot of um, other places such as the front facade of Buckingham Palace. This is where you will get your first impression uh, when you come to stay with us and believe me we welcome you with open arms, your bags are brought up to your rooms um, and you're given a drink pretty much immediately. As I say the whole thing about a good uh, Irish country house is plenty of hot water, plenty of heating, uh, and lots to drink and very good food by our fantastic chefs and superbly looked after, as you've just seen, by Francis, our butler, and Joan, our housekeeper. And the next slide, please. Thank you, Giovanna. This is one of our favourite rooms in the house. It's the library, which is yours to enjoy if you take the house. If you're a smaller group, we might be in here mostly uh, pre-lunch drinks or possibly in the evening as well. But um, plenty of books to look at, as well as my beloved wife puts particularly lovely books in your rooms as well um, to um, give you some good reading. Uh, but a beautiful room with an open fire as well, uh, which can be enjoyed uh, throughout the day. And the next slide, thanks Giovanna. So our main drawing room, which leads down to the dining room, a little bit of a surprise I've given away, but uh, we can get a piper maybe to pipe you in for dinner. How about that? But this would be for a larger group. Uh, again, drinks would be served in the grand hall, uh, which you've just seen. And uh, then we get you in here for, for pre-drinks before we go in uh, for a delicious dinner. And we, we really sort of care about what you want to eat. So very much local produce grown on the estate or thereabouts um, and washed down with um, incredibly, I hope for your sake, good wine. Um, and the next slide, thank you. So Crum is a party house. It was built um, really as a sailing lodge. And we have been very lucky over the years, not just in my generation, but before, and my late father, to entertain many, many people. We've had Prince Charles, we've had numerous members of the royal family, prime ministers and politicians, and particularly, most especially, with my father's connection as being an aquary, um, his 
grand, his father was a query to George VI, our Queen's late father, um, and he was page at the coronation. Um, and also, like Lord Brookborough, he was uh, a Lord Lieutenant for County Fermanagh, the uh, Queen's representative in Fermanagh. And Her Majesty graced us with her company um, in 2012 to come and say goodbye to Dad, uh, to say thank you for his service as Lord Lieutenant and for being uh, her page um, at his coronation. So when we entertain, we like to do it properly. We like to make you feel comfortable. And particularly, we like to talk to you and hear what your questions are. What's it like to live in a house like this? What's aristocracy really like? And we make you feel incredibly um, at home. And the next slide, thanks, Giovanna. Um, this is one of our um, main bedrooms. Um, we have invested quite a lot of money recently. We understand and we've listened to you lovely, particularly North American market, who like showers. Every bedroom in the castle is en suite. Every bedroom has individual uh, control uh, of your heating. En suite bathrooms and showers and pressure. As I said, hot water, plenty of gush um, and uh, good food, exactly. Uh, so again, this is one of our main state bedrooms uh, where you will be looked after, your bags will be brought up um, when you arrive, your beds will be turned down at night and your curtains drawn. And you're just made to feel, as we're not a hotel, we want you to enjoy our home and come and see us um, and enjoy being yourselves together as a group. You don't walk down to breakfast and say, oh my gosh, who's that? It will be us and our staff who will look after you and enjoy you living in our house uh, for um, as many days as you wish to come for. And the next slide, thanks Giovanna. Again, we're right on the banks of Upper Loch Earn, as, as uh, Tanya said earlier, that is the Victorian boat house. It was actually the former home of the Loch Earn Yacht Club built by my family and we are very lucky to have quite a hold over that. We're set in 1900 acres of beautiful National Trust Parkland which is the equivalent of your Royal Oak Foundation in the United States of America. Uh, so it's beautifully kept, well preserved, lots of beautiful walks, trips on the lock. Um, I guide uh, walks all the time to show you around both from the boat and from the estate as well. And of course, I will give you a personal guided tour with me um, in the house itself. Um, and the next slide, thanks Giovanna. We are very privileged to have on our doorstep these beautiful deer, they're called fallow deer, and they were put into the park by my late father back in the 1970s, and they are a joy to wake up to every morning um, and see grazing in the park. Um, there's fauna and flora here, there's wildlife here, the red squirrel lives here, the pine martin lives here, uh, special species of flowers and butterflies, and I suppose the best time to come is sort of from uh, after Easter till September, October, where you get the real feel of um, sort of spring into summer, into autumn. So as I said, Harriet and I would be delightful to welcome you here. We're not a hotel, as I said, or a guest house. It's our home, your home for the time you're here. And we would love to look after you. And thank you so much for having me. Thanks a million. Um, I've just been writing in the um, the box there and uh, John, John, like if one person wanted to stay, it's possible or if a small group or if a family, uh, you're flexible about accommodating people's wishes and the same applies to Ashbrook and to Colebrook. Um, and also, even for, if we had a group of people, you know, who are visiting stately homes or gardens, you can accommodate, you know, groups for lunch or dinner. Isn't that right? Absolutely, Siobhan, you know us very well. You do so much for us. And I just want to say very quickly, I know we're um, getting a, a time constraint here, but Adams and Butler have been fantastic. They believe in us. They know exactly what we do. We are an experience. We're off the beaten track. You can go and do all the lovely things in Ireland, stay in the hotels, play golf, etc. But if you want something very special, off the beaten track, come in and meet us and enjoy our hospitality. Yes, you're right, Siobhan, we do smaller groups that we host because we feel we deserve to give them the undivided attention that they're looking for and I suppose paying for. Uh, and of course, we rent the whole castle out. So I suppose the smaller groups, probably 10 to 12 people, so we can all do things together. Um, if you want to be bigger, then we, uh, we leave the house 
and uh, you take it um, up to, as I said, uh, around 30 people in a beautiful mixture of doubles and twins. And then um, also you can rooms. accommodate just like a couple staying with you. I've, I've done that many yeah. times. It's I know. wonderful. And, yeah. and we've had many people come back time and time again. So we're going to quickly go over to Mary um, because we don't, we, we um, want to uh, make sure we discover Tyrone because it really is something fascinating. And then if people want to ask questions later, we are going to ask uh, everyone to stay on for questions. Um, so this is the first time I saw your video, Mary. It's amazing. And I didn't even know about it. Thanks, Siobhan. Siobhan, we are just opened. We are the newest attraction in Northern Ireland. And I want to say thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, I'm the tourism manager for the Ulster District Council. And I wanted to speak to you today about this luxurious stars and stone experience. And it's one of tourism Northern Ireland's luxurious markets. Um, it's situated in the unspoiled area of um, the Spurns in County Tyrone. But if you put up the presentation, I can bring it to life for you. Okay, everybody, um, if you just go on to the next slide, please. So on Dark Sky Park and Observatory is Northern Ireland's first dark sky park. There only is another dark sky park in County, County Mayo, but we're the first dark sky park in Northern Ireland. Today I will also be speaking to you very briefly about other things to do in the area, because I can see your comments and what, can, what you can do when you're staying in County Tyrone. On slide three, please. The Stars and Stone Experience incorporates all Dark Sky Park and Observatory and is located in Davin Forest, an area of outstanding natural beauty. The centre is only 80 minutes from Belfast, over two hours from Dublin, roughly 40 minutes from Derry stroke London Derry, an hour and 20 minutes from Donegal and the Wild Atlantic Way, and about 40 minutes from Fermanagh. As you can see, we are situated in the heart of Northern Ireland. Slide, please. Om Dark Sky Park is the 78th Dark Sky Park in the world. And just to let you know, the 77th Dark Sky Park is actually the Grand Canyon. 80% of people now live under sky glow. And what I mean by that is when you go out, look up, you won't be able to see the stars. And what you're actually looking at is planets. But when you come to Dava, there's a true star party in the sky. Other things to do in the area, we have mountain bike trails, beautiful archaeology walks, including our new solar walk, which takes you to our modern day observatory on, linking us to Beckmore stone circles, which dates back to 4000 BC, known as our first observatory. You're now looking at Beckmore stone circles in this picture. Now, Beckmore stone circles is where our experience begins. You will stay in Northern Ireland's first dark sky, glamping five-star village. They have glass triangular roofs that you can lay back and enjoy the darkness of the sky. Back more stone circles, you can listen to the local storyteller or tour guide telling you all about these stones and how they were discovered. Finally, ending up in Alm Observatory via our interactive solar walk, where Adam, our astronomer, will help you look through our state-of-our-art LX600 Mead go-to telescope. You don't need to be into astronomy to come here and enjoy this unspoiled area. Do you, do you want to move the slides on there? Yep. <laughs> you, can see, yeah, you can see this experience in our video at the end. Now, what we're looking at here is the next, is the picture of Alm Odyssey. This is the first outdoor show that we have done and it links our heritage and our archeology. span It's all to sound and music, so there's no language barrier here. So you wrap up, you put on, you put on your headset and you just sit back and you enjoy. And within the exhibition, we have state-of-the-art holograms, VR headsets and digital screens. Now, you are looking here at the Aurora Borealis, or as many people prefer to call, call it, the Northern Lights. And part of this experience is we can get our astronomer and our video guys and our photograph guys to show you how to take that perfect shot and bring home to the guys in America and do a bit of bragging and say, look what I have saw. Now, we will know when we get a solar storm that we will be able to see the Aurora Borealis on occasions. Next slide, please. We do encourage people to bring binoculars and telescopes, but we know that's not possible when you are traveling from the States and other parts of the world. So we have small telescopes and binoculars that you're able to use. 
we also have a 40 year old telescope that has been donated. So for this luxury market, the white glove market, we will let you look through the 40 year old telescope and also our LX 600 mate telescope that you'll see in the video. Slide please. Now this photograph was taken a few evenings ago and you can just see the moon and this around twilight. So we have a day and a night experience. So if the sun is shining, let's look at the sun, look at the dark spots. And in the nighttime, when it gets dark, we can look at the planets and the moons around Jupiter and the rings of Saturn. The beautiful archeology span walks, as I said, mountain trails and children's play area. Um, next slide, please. So that's the video, sorry. Um, nearby accommodation, then pardon me, is uh, Spurring Lampen View. Um, next slide, please. And other things to do then in the area. Um, Seamus Heaney Home Place. I know maybe a few of you have already been there. It's an amazing centre um, dedicated to Seamus Heaney. You've got sheep dogs at work, or Jamesy, the local sheep dog, uh, no, so no, he's not sheep dog, local shepherd, and his sheep and his dogs will herd the sheep in, and it's really, really um, a great fun, a great days out. Killingburn Castle is very near. It's only 10 miles from on. You can stay in the South Catering uh, Apartments, or you can do candlelight tea, candlelight dinners, pardon me, and high teas. And someone asked there, what was the large lake? That is actually Loch Ney. We can do boat tours on Loch Ney. And also we can bring you in at 10 o'clock in the morning when the fishermen are bringing the eels in and you can actually taste some of the eels, which is a really great experience. And if you don't like squirmish things, it's maybe not for you, but uh, great to touch the eels and feel them. Um, then you can take your eels and go over and see Brona in, in the bakehouse. And uh, she used all local produce where you can make your breads. And so you can have your eels on that wheat and bread. And it is lovely. If you enter your history and your heritage, I recommend going to the Hill of the O'Neill in Dungannon. And this is where the O'Neill dynasty and the, the history of Ireland actually sort of began. And there's great stories. Um, but I leave that one um, until you visit Hill of the O'Neill. Um, folks, I know we're getting very near the time and I rushed that, but I've got a short video um, which will let you see um, the om um, and the unspoiled area of the of the spurns, and um, guys, get in touch with um, Adams and Butler for more information, or you can go on to www.omdarksky.com, um, um, and I hope you enjoy um, the short video of om. Welcome to Northern Ireland's first dark sky park. So, folks, what you're looking at here is back more. Very different because it's got three sets of stone circles and alignments. These alignments follow over to the summer and winter solstice, and we put on events um, and we bring the astronomer and the archaeologist. This is the Spurred Glampen village with the triangular roofs, which you can enjoy the darkness of the sky. And now you're getting the first glimpse here of the observatory. Only new, modern, it's left floating in actual fog. Um, and you're getting a glimpse there of our outdoor light show. This is Kirsty. Kirsty's my supervisor. She'll take you into the exhibition, show you around, let you touch and feel, and you can have that one-to-one -one experience um, with the guides. Then this is our first glimpse of our LX600 telescope. And here Adam will let you use the telescope and it's very one-to-one. And -one. Um, we'll let you see, tell you what you're looking at, what you're seeing, what you're doing. Um, Adam's going to come into the shot now. And um, Adam then will also tell you how to pick that perfect shot. Um, a lot of our pictures have ended up in the BBC. Um, we get a lot of television weather from this area. And it's, I just can't wait to, to see you and meet you all at all. Um, and hopefully get you into Mid Ulster shortly. Thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you, Siobhan. Thanks a million, Mary. That scenery is absolutely fantastic. I just so love your opening <laughs> shot. It's like it's it's a part again of Northern Ireland that no one knows about. It's very much on spoil, Siobhan, and uh, something very proud of. And you know, you just can't say we're a dark sky park. You know, a lot of effort, uh, ten years in the making of this observatory um, and bringing that whole area to life. But it is the reviews are, are incredible. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Like I was, you know, shocked when I saw it. Like just so beautiful, the stones and everything, the greenery. Um, I'm doing an event in um, the, the GCC countries and I was looking for very green shots and even that would be something to bring with me. It's absolutely Take it all with you, Siobhan, more than halfway. <laughs> 
So um, thanks for everyone for being there. Um, if there's any questions, because I know there's lots of chats and we were trying to answer them. Um, I think the most important thing we're trying to get across is that everyone is flexible. So whether it's one person, a lunch, a visit, a group, everything can be done. Now the price won't be the same per person dependent on the group, but everyone here that's been on the call is flexible. They want business. They're willing to bend over backwards and make sure your clients are happy. And it's just that for us sometimes when people go to Northern Ireland, they're smitten. Like John John will tell you and Chris, when we send people up there, they come back time and time again. They bring their friends, they bring their family. So that's why we're trying to get the message out that, you know, when you come to Ireland, make sure you go to Northern Ireland. And I've said time and time again, Northern Ireland and Scotland is an amazing combination as well. So if anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask questions, um, we'll be sending out the recording. There's John John. Yes, John. Um, thank you, everybody. Two very small things which I, I just want to quickly say. First of all, we're very, very family orientated. Um, we do multi-generation um, stays here. So that's really, really welcomed. And that's very important to get over. It's not just couples, etc. It's families coming to stay and enjoying the fun here in Fermanagh. The second thing, my apologies for our website. We're doing a major revamp, which will be very advantageous when it comes out, but without self-promotion, we are on Instagram at Crum Castle, all one word, or Facebook, Crum Castle West Wing. And there are plenty of photographs there. But again, my apologies that our website is, is down at the moment. But believe me, it's down for a good reason. So um, bear with us. Um, another thing, just I noticed there a question about World War II. Um, I've forgotten whether Karen touched on, but yeah. there's a very good marine center yeah. in uh, Derry and a lot of clients might have had family that were stationed there. I think it was the biggest marine World War II. Yeah, um, the Beach Hill Country House Hotel um, is based just about three miles outside the city center. Um, it was where the US Marines were based during World War II. Um, it's a fantastic um, country manor house hotel located in 32 acres of Parkland. So again, there's a great affinity there with the US Marines and the US markets. And a lot of people want to come back and visit where their, where their grandfathers or wherever was based. And obviously there's another area called Ebrington Square. Um, that was again, the base for World War II. And that's for example, where the Wall City Brewery is and we're hoping to build a new hotel so we hopefully in 2023 we will have another new hotel um, located in that area so there's a lot of new developments and regeneration going on in Derry and as you say Siobhan it's about the new Derry as well it's vibrant it's it's moving forward and again there's a lot of investment being um, developed now into the city. And also, um, just Donny, I know Donny, like Donny Gall, I always think of the back garden of Derry, but they're meant to have, isn't it the most beautiful airport in the world? Yeah, just about an hour's drive. Yeah, they've got the airport and it's been awarded, I think, for the second or third years as the, the best scenic um, airport. And again, it's on our doorstep. So it's a great destination for visitors to stay. And it's easy to fly up to Derry as well from various points. If people want to, you know, cut time and they're like time poor and... Yeah, well, they're working hopefully on a connection with Dublin again. Um, and that's hopefully they're working on that at the moment. It'd be great for that to be announced maybe by the end of the year. So if you've any clients coming in via Dublin, they could fly up to Derry and that flight will take 35 minutes. I've done it myself in the past, but it has lapsed for a number of years. But we are hoping and trying to get that back, um, back on base. And then just I noticed um, there was a question about Mexican clients at the moment, the I think the the like Mexicans, everyone can come in except I've forgotten which one is difficult at the moment. I think it's Brazilians and yeah, South Brazil, Africa yeah. at the moment. Yeah. And everyone else can come in and once they get the test done and then five days later, because everything changes all the time. So Change on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, Mexicans are as welcome as everyone else. So there isn't an issue. I know the only two that um, there are issues on is South Africans and uh, Brazil at the moment. Brazil at the moment. At the moment. Yeah. But everyone, yeah. every other country is yeah. allowed in um, at the moment. Um, so there's nothing like 
the country is open um and the i think any flights into belfast does anyone know um if they've been resumed or not i'm not too sure on that it's mainly from gb there's been very little from the europe uh, no, from, we don't have direct flights for obviously from, from america but yeah, yeah so there it's, was, it's, yeah the, there was one at one stage but that's not there anymore. yeah no there was one from the there. Yeah, yeah it's not happening no um, and then, but do remember that it's very accessible from Dublin, like going up to the north is like yeah. almost, and, and, and I'm not exaggerating, but people used to call Dublin airport at one stage, the Belfast secondary airport, because it was so close to Belfast. So, you know, Dublin airport is on the north side of Dublin city, and it's like an hour and a half and yeah. you're, but not less, you're across the border, you know, and Brexit will not have an effect. Uh, you know, and Siobhan, as you well as you well know, either through Adams and Butler, but anyone coming to stay with us, we can very happily help them out with transport. We are literally an hour and three quarters from both Belfast airports and Dublin, and the Dublin roads, as you know, are fantastic. I mean, they're like they're runways. And should anyone leave their mobile phones, cell phones in in Crum Castle, you can repatriate them as well. Do you remember? <laughs> And we have a helicopter lawn. So if you want to jet into San Angelo and Esquillen in your private jet, no problem. Or you can land on the lawn here at the castle. So um, we'll end this soon, but I just want to see, is Chris there? Do you want to add anything? Um, no, it's just been terrific having this opportunity to tell you a little bit about Colebrook uh, Park and Ashbrook. Um, and we very much look forward to welcoming you. I heard there are a few comments about the American military, um, which uh, was interesting because during the war, we had 4,000 troops stationed in Colebrook, of which uh, the Minnesota regiments were stationed at Ashbrook. And the house actually was their officer's mess uh, before my parents moved uh, in at the end of the war in 1940, uh, 1946. Um, no, it's been an absolute pleasure looking after you, or, or it will be an absolute pleasure to look after you. And thank you very much for, for the opportunity to tell you a little bit about Colebrook Park and Ashbrook House. And uh, just one thing I'd love to add about Ashbrook House is that I, I don't want to mention the rate because it's such good value for what you're offering. Will I mention, give a ballpark at the um, moment, the price? That's, that's up to you. This year, we've been putting a lot more into it um, in, in the way of jacuzzis and pizza ovens uh, within the gardens. And uh, we do have an indoor riding school there. Um, and we have horses as well. But uh, that's something that has to be arranged well in advance if people want to um, want to uh, facilitate those. Um, so there is a huge amount more. I, as I said, I need three hours to tell you about uh, Cobrook and Ashbrook Park. But yeah, <laughs> leave it up to you. We work through you, Siobhan. You've been tremendously supportive and your team has been great. So um, I leave it with you. And just so just to, to clarify and get people are confused a little bit. So Colebrook is the bigger, larger house. Ashbrook is a smaller, dower house. And that can be, um, you know, you, you do it as an exclusive use, but you can also do private visits, lunches, dinners with Chris. You can do anything you want, um, you know, for families to stay and then shooting as well, as he mentioned, you were talking about clay pigeon shooting and then uh, Cobra can also now be taken in its entirety, yes? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if somebody wants just to take Cobra cows, uh, they, they can do that. If they want uh, Alan there, um, that's up to him, but I'm, I know he's, he's very flexible on that and Ashbrook uh, can be fully catered or self-catering and in advance, or you can take the whole place together and between the 12 bedrooms at Colebrook and the eight at Ashbrook, that's 20. We also, the one thing we didn't mention is we also have a number of five-star cottages, which are two bedroom and three bedroom. So they can also be included in as an extra bedroom. So if you add the whole lot together, uh, you've got nearly 30, 30 bedrooms uh, within the estate, which is really within a radius of, of uh, half a mile of Colebrook House. Um, sorry. Go, no, go. go ahead. Um, and yes, I mean, anything is possible, uh, providing we've been given notice. Um, uh, so it's, it's really, we need to know what you want 
and then we can discuss with you uh, how and if we can provide it. But basically, we're very flexible. And, you and, and actually, of course, being such good neighbours with Alan, particularly, and Christopher, um, we all work together. So people staying with us um, can go over to Colbrook and Ashbrook and enjoy the hospitality there, the clay pigeon, uh, the hospitality of, of both families and vice versa. So we are all very much together, but doing our own thing at the same time. Uh, but very much um, together. And also like in County Turin, we also have Barons Court, which is another option for visits, um, as we mentioned before. So um, I think we leave it at that. As I said, I'm just going to stress once more um, that I think it'd be lovely to do is that, you know, we've done it in the, John, John and I have traveled uh, in the past um, and, you know, anytime any agencies want to do a function for their clients, you know, we're more than happy to come over and talk to people um, because they are fantastic properties and they're very much, um, you know, it's something very unique. It's not mass market. Uh, very few people have visited. So if you want something special for those clients who want to be the first to do things is re they really are fantastic options so i'm just going to thank everyone again for joining us we will be sending out a recording and we'll be having our part two on northern ireland geo i think on the 24th yes the 24th we'll cover belfast and the coast that side and thank you very much to rebecca from our office for arranging this as well and she's a fermana lassie um, so there's Rebecca there, uh, if you want sure. to. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. It's thanks, great. everyone. Thank you for arranging and thanks to all the agents. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank you for thank having you. us. Well done, you, the team, Siobhan. Brilliant. Well thanks done. for listening, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.